So there are three new features on Graphene OS that I want to talk about today. So let's start with the first one, which is denying the sensor permission by default. So if we check the official documentation, which as always will be linked down below, we can see the sensor permission disallows access to all their sensors not covered by existing Android permissions. If you want more details on the sensor permission or the network permission toggle, I'll link a video on the screen now where I cover both of those. So by default, the sensor permission is allowed for any app you install, but recently a feature was added in the settings which allows you to disable that. So to access that, we're gonna go into settings, scroll down to privacy. So right here we can see allow sensors permission to apps by default. Sensors is a non-standard permission. Apps may malfunction if denied, which I'll be demonstrating shortly. So we're going to disable that. So now sensor permissions are not allowed by default. Also the note here describes that some apps may need to be manually restarted after allowing the sensor permission for it to work correctly. So to show how this works, I'm going to go into Aurora store. I'm gonna search for a compass app, download the first one, install, select install. I don't actually use this app. I'm just using it to demonstrate this setting. So now if we go and open the app, we can see the app doesn't work because that sensor permission, which regulates the compass access, it's not able to access it. We see here sensor error and motion sensor in this device are not responding because sensors are disabled now by default. You might notice a pop-up that showed up here. Compass tried to access sensors. If we want to allow it now because the app is not going to function, so our compass is useless, we can go ahead and tap on that. And here we now have a prompt to allow those sensor permissions. So I'll select allow. And this app did work without restarting, but some apps you might need to restart. And we can now see the compass is functioning as expected. So I do think that's a good toggle to disable. Not all apps need access to the sensors on your device by default, so disable that. If the app doesn't work, you can either use that notification you saw where I clicked allow, or you can long press on the app, go to app info, go to permissions. And from here, you can also manually allow or disallow sensors if you're trying to troubleshoot an app in the future. The second feature I want to talk about is disallowing the network toggle from the installation screen. You might have seen that when I tried to install the Compass, but this time we're going to download a different app. Let's say you don't want to use the default keyboard on Graphene OS. Instead, you want to use Gboard, which is the Google keyboard. I'm going to click Install. But when using this app, you don't want to allow it network access. In the past, you'd have to install the app and then disable that permission from the permission manager on the phone. But now we can see here, do you want to install this app? Allow network permission, I can uncheck it. And now on installation, that permission will be revoked and the app will not have network access. Go ahead and click install. So now the app is installed. We can even go ahead and manually verify that worked as expected. We're going to go into the app info, go to permissions, and here we can see not allowed network. So as we can see using the installation screen, we were able to revoke network access, which from a privacy perspective is pretty handy. The app never has network permissions. And from a convenience perspective, it's kind of nice. You can do it directly from that screen. And if you want more information on that toggle, again, grapheneos.org has a great write-up on it. Always reference the official documentation from the developers instead of third parties. And this will be linked down below. So take a minute to read it over to become familiar with those permissions. And the last feature, I wasn't able to find an app to actually demonstrate this with. So I'm going to talk about it and show you where that setting is. But the last setting, Let's say you have an app that opens and crashes. This could be due to the additional exploit protection that Graphene OS implements. So the setting to access that, again, we can go into the app info for an app. And then down below, you'll see a setting under advanced. We have two options. We have configure hardening and then exploit protection compatibility mode. So exploit protection compatibility mode, what that does is that disables two of the exploit protection features, which are both individually listed under the configure hardening section. So if you wanna troubleshoot and only disable one of them, if you're having trouble with an app, you can do so here, either one or the other, or you can simply enable the exploit protection compatibility mode. And again, their site has some more info on that actual setting and what it does. Recently, this was affecting a lot of games that used Unity as they had a memory corruption bug, which could be used to actually exploit the individual app, but since Graphene OS has additional exploit protection that was causing the app to actually crash because it couldn't launch correctly. And this is not an actual issue with Graphene OS. It's actually uncovering issues with apps and how they were written. 
In the future, I do want to go into some more detail regarding Hardened Malloc and a few other things that Graphene OS does for exploit protection. Honestly, it's pretty amazing the things they protect against that you don't really see, but they're just happening in the background. And to me, that's just one more reason to use Graphene OS as compared to another uh, Android-based OS, even standard Android OS or one of the other ones out there that are popular. So just onto one more tangent since we're on the topic. These security features, such as the exploit protection, is probably one of the most important features that Graphene OS has. Unfortunately, it doesn't get much attention because as a security feature, it's just sitting there running in the background all the time protecting you. And it's not as flashy as some privacy features that people talk about, but it is an extremely important feature and they have some great write-ups about it on their website. So I do suggest going over there and checking it out, especially the exec spawning and just some other things over here, such as the bugs uncovered by security features. These are some great features running on the OS that most people don't know about.